Well howdy guys, it's Matt here. Welcome to the channel. I'm back from my little break and I am still trying to work out, still trying to find my feet, what's going on. I've basically forgotten how to vlog properly. Um, trying to remember all of that. Hopefully the videos still make a bit of sense. <laughs> What's still going on is we're still doing some header work, um, still just trying to get some harvest gear all sorted. Um, there's just a few, yeah, quite a few, just little odds and ends, which is always the case, but we're, we're working through them at least. But um, we've got some um, uni joints going on for the PDO drive on the um, Echo truck here. But um, for those that have been watching a few of the last videos that had um, a lot of the header work in it, would have noticed on header number two, um, we did have quite a shutter in the, um, the shaker shoe assembly and that was causing a few other issues but while I was away we did suspect something and I did mention that um, while I was away they were going to check it out but we found that the main pivot bush it's just like a rubber bush um, which is in here um, and you can't actually see it so that makes it very hard to check but we when we got it got this header we we jammed pry bars in there to try and move it just to see if there's any movement and there wasn't so we assumed that they were okay but um yeah it turns out that there was they weren't and they were um they were flogged out so that was the main cause of the shuttering um and but because it was shuttering it caused other issues so the shuttering probably wore out the front bearing um and then the rear bearing and yeah did all the rest of it so um it would have been nice to pick that up sooner but um yeah we thought it was all good. Yeah, I think the header front over there, I've actually just got to go over and help Josiah with some drive motors on that. Um, and yeah, just for the, the draper belts. So yeah, we're just checking them out. A few of them had a little bit of metal in them, so we're wanting to, um, yeah, just replace ones that need replacing or rebuild ones that we can rebuild. Um, Cause yeah, it's a painful when they let you down. So how was your holiday, Josiah? Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> you didn't have one. No. <laughs> Kept the show running for us. Oh, that's good. The little hydraulic motors that drive these draper belts can be a little challenging to get in, but it looks like you've you've pretty much done it. We are just working out some lights for both headers. Um, we've, it's pretty the lighting systems we had on these were from quite a few years on this one, anyways, from, from quite a few years ago. Um, so yeah, we're just trying to work out what we want to do there. We're going to be putting a rather large light bar on header number two. It already did have one up there, but we've just yeah, needed a bit more. So we'll see how that one goes. Then we might do the same to this, this other header. So Phil is taking the old comma for a joyride. He's going to put some chickpeas in it. Pure power. Bit, bit smoky though. Um, yeah, actually, the other thing I nearly forgot is we do have the Bromar mother bin here, um, which there's just a couple of things that are happening to that as well. A couple of things need welding up, some braces and supports. Um, check over the, um, I think it's all been greased here on the PDO shaft and that, but just to give it a, a quick once over. Um, all the flighting and that is quite worn in it and which we knew when we bought it last year um, but we'll, we'll probably get another year out of it and then um, yeah then next year I think we're gonna we're gonna go through and put all new flighting in it um, yeah that's the story with this isn't it Phil I don't, just got... what, I don't know what story you're telling but I'll, I guess I'll agree now yeah. I reckon you should go and show everyone um, what from the inside of the bin and while you're in there you can weld that flight up oh. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't sound like something someone that's holding a camera should do <laughs> There's plenty of steel there that your magnet will attract to <laughs> so you can just 
yeah, stick that, it on the side. That doesn't sound as fun as putting light bars <laughs> on headers. <laughs> but actually, I meant to be helping Josiah, so stop distracting me. Oh, so basically, while I was away, there was a little bit of rain here and there, but um, there was a fair bit of paddock work that was able to be done. Um, but yeah, I came back and it's just rained um, another 25, 30 mil, I think. I think the development block, the development block actually got even more. So it's very wet again. So that's why we're back, um, yeah, working on the headers and, and doing all the shed jobs. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll dry out fairly quick because we are well into spring now and it's warming up. So um, I think, yeah, hopefully it'll be not too long and we'll be back doing some um, paddock work and yeah, just probably won't be that long until we're actually potentially harvesting so might be another two three maybe four weeks um, and then the canola might um, yeah might be out of a nibble of that right oh well after getting distracted which is seems to happen easily we're back up here on the roof with this light bar so the plan is to whack this big light bar it, what happens is we get easily persuaded to buy things that Generally, we probably don't need need, but we think it'll be a good idea. And this is one of them. Dad got convinced to bring one of these home. It's a one of those steady light bars, which um, we've used a few of their work lights. We're starting to use a lot of them now, just the cheap ones, so, yeah, just not lasting. So, um, yeah, so we bought this, and it's a 50 inch curved one. And we're gonna stick it on the front here of the header and just see how it goes. If we really like this, we'll end up putting it on the other header as well. Oh, well, we got it all mounted up. Um, we'll have to come back up here and maybe tidy off that wiring a bit more. Um, we might have to, because you can't really drill through the roof easily, we might end up um, actually just running a bit of plate from there and siliconing it um, to here. And that way it should stop any vibration. But I think it'll, um, yeah, it should be bright enough, that's for sure. So the other thing that has happened is we've put some stickers up. So there's one on that side and one on the other side. Oh, yeah, there's the light bar. No, it's actually a, um... oh yeah, you can start to see it now. Might be pointing down a bit too far. But it's actually a light bar that reflects from the uh, bottom and shines up. And um, that way it actually reduces a lot of the wasted light. Um, typically with LED lights, um, they do have a reflector, but there's a lot of light that's thrown way up into the air and, and it's just wasted basically. So I think, yeah, I'm, I'd be keen to, keen to see this at night, how it goes. Um, oh yeah, there's the other sticker there. So we just got to do that to the other header as well. But yeah, header number two is, is pretty much done. Um, I think there's just a couple of guards that need to go on it. Um, and we probably will do another quick once over before harvest um, we do have a little bit of time so um, but yeah that's exciting to to pretty well have that done and that shutter is is pretty well gone so um, yeah very very exciting to get that sorted well guys another day and Phil has been into town this time and I think he was a little bit jealous of the light bar Brad got on header number two um, so he went for a visit and lashed out and was talked into buying a set of these. Now, they are actually about the same price as the light bar, so they're not cheap, but we're hoping, yeah, for the, for the money we're spending, we're hoping that it'll last. And I mean, it certainly feels like they will. They're, they're very sort of sturdy and the brackets on them are, um, are really solid. So we're hoping to get the value for money out of them. We've been down the road of buying cheap lights and yeah, they work great for the first little bit, but after a year or so, um, the lenses are all gone yellow and there's moisture in them and yeah, they're just, just hopeless. So um, we're hoping to invest in some decent ones and so far all the steady lights that we have had have worked well and lasted. So we're, um, yeah, we're really hoping that, that these will be the same. Um, but yeah, these are a 90s, well, I think they're nearly 100 watt um, and they're a spot and a spread so they're like a combo and with the pattern on them we've just 
done it in the shed, we think it'll suit well. Um, you'll get the distance, but also shine out to the sides a little bit. So we're gonna have them mounted up on top um, where we did have those other driving lights. So yeah, we're hoping that this will pay for itself with um, maybe not putting a rock through the header or something like that. But um, yeah, I'm just about to put these on and change the plugs on them. And um, yeah, that should be it. Well, we got the lights up there. Um, it's good actually, well, I did shorten that bracket a bit because the bracket was out a fair way and there was just a bit too much, um, yeah, a bit too much movement. So I shortened that up and now I've only got the two lights. I did leave uh, cabling up there and a plug for a third one um, if we want to put a spread light shining right down, but um, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. It might be fine how it is. Um, but the other thing we're gonna do is with that, those other little square lights um, is we're hoping we can fit them in nicely and just replace these ones here. Um, so these ones are for shining down here behind the comb. Um, and what that does is it helps you get and know or gauge how high your stubble is. Um, so usually with the halogen ones, because they're a bit yellower, um, it cuts through the dust and that, and which that makes, it makes you can see it easier. Um, so these will be a bit whiter, um, but they do come with these little um, filter lenses which make them very yellow so if it is a bit hard um, and it's reflecting off the dust and that too much we can always whack this on um, and it'll still be brighter than than what these ones are so anyway we'll just try it on this header first um, if it's no good I mean we can always put the old ones back if we need to yellow cover on there now just so we don't lose it mainly but there's a good chance that it might be too yellow or too filtered um, so we might be better off just with the light as it is but uh, we'll just have to wait and see we'll give it a try um, and it actually spreads this way so more up and down so that'll suit well for behind the comb um, anyway we're just experimenting we'll see what happens and I've got dad he's on one of his latest projects He's, um, don't quite know what he's doing, but can you enlighten us, Dad? What's what's going on here? Oh, mate, this is the most embarrassing time you could have possibly picked to pick on me. Yeah, well, I, I sort of saw you were doing some wild things, so I thought I'd better grab the camera. Well, this trailer we bought at a clearing sale oh, back in the late 80s, and it's been sitting around under the trees and not doing much. I've been scratching my head, thinking, how can I retrofit something? So I'm going to take this out make up a, a frame and put a 200 litre oil drum in there and work out I think I'll use a um, little compressor that we used a hardy compressor that we used on a blobber dobber and I'll pressurize the on the blobber dobber well before you were born we used to have a blobber dobber a little it was a little um, compressor and it was about this by this and you could switch it on left or right hand boom and it's down in the shed there. Oh, for, for spraying, like mm, for, for, foam, for foam, foaming, foam on the sprayer. So I thought, <clears throat> I'll see how many pound PSI that generates, but you only need two or three to get some positive pressure to force it out of the oil drum. I'm just looking for ways I can do it without affecting the um, the balance sheet. <laughs> so <clears throat> I was really hoping, I didn't even give this a thought. Now this is really embarrassing. Anyway, oh, I, I, there was there was it was hanging up by all sorts of angles there before. I'd, I wasn't quick enough on the camera, but... No, well, I'm glad you didn't catch it sooner. <laughs> oh, so you, you're you well and truly into it then? Well, I'm following a, an idea and I haven't got <laughs> all the details yet. At least if it fails, there's no money in it, eh? That, no, it won't cost anything. <laughs> because a little tiny tot only, only holds 150 litres. So if I go up into the sticks there and on the little side by side, I can just go up there to get a going again and fill it up with fuel rather than, you know, the big fuel trailers are quite heavy and cumbersome not, not nimble no we'll see that what would the d4 use in a day oh the other day when we we're pushing rocks um it probably used 100 but look maybe 10 15 liters an hour for what we've been doing in the moment not much yeah so now that's it's probably a good size a 200 liter tank but i've got to get some i think these are old beetle 
beetle top uh, rim. So oh, so you are going to put some new tyres on. I'm going to try and get some new tyres. <laughs> and I'm going to try and get some hubcaps for it. And it will not look as neat and tidy as what you boys would do. But I'm hoping it will be practical. I plan on getting a proper just getting the proper um, socket end here for this. This is a bit this is a bit out there. I don't want to go back to that. Bit wild. And I want a, a flip stand here, so I'll have to do that. Oh dear, this is embarrassing, Matt. People are gonna come up with all sorts of ideas what I should be doing. I think I'll just won't I'll, I'll just won't just embrace any, it. No, I won't read any comments at all. <laughs> <laughs> well there you go. If you've got any great ideas on <laughs> Just leave me in my ignorance. <laughs> <laughs>